Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 97. This episode is with the fantastic Andy Norris, actress, creature performer, stunt woman extraordinaire. Andy's awesome. We talk about uh, how cool her parents are and how they fostered uh, a love of theater from a young age. How playing a penguin has come in handy in multiple points in her life. Um, that'll make more sense in a little bit. <laughs> we talk about how she took a break from acting for a little while to go into tech and then working into uh, in that market in Washington. And uh, what a snowpocalypse is, because I had no idea. It sounds crazy. Uh, we talk about how she got into creature work, how she got started in stunts. We uh, talked about the Mind's Eye Tribe, which is an action actors academy. That's the coolest title ever. Uh, that she does with TJ Storm, another previous guest of the show. Uh, we talk about the differences in uh, performance capture and on-camera acting. Uh, we also talk about how she is in episode two of Vader Immortal, which is out right now, which is really cool because she gets to play a dark guest, which is basically a rancor, which is awesome. So cool. Uh, let's just get right to it. Andy's awesome. So please enjoy the interesting podcast, episode number 97 with Andy Norris. Theme song time. have to have multiple calendars like one on my phone as well as on my computer because if, okay. I'm, if I'm out and I get a response I'm like okay cool yeah uh Tuesday works and then I get home I'm like Tuesday doesn't work oh no she's <laughs> so, everyone's from all over the place but it's cool it's fun it's a fun thing to do yeah so, I'm juggling yeah exactly that's something that I do for fun uh, uh yeah it's not it's not bad there are worse things <laughs> to do but you're in California that's cool are you from California I am from California. Wow, I feel like I was not many people are. Really? I feel like I feel like a lot of people when I talk to them that are in California, they usually moved from somewhere else to California. That makes sense. I mean, I I was born in Colorado, okay, but cool. My family moved when I was so young that I'm from California. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Do you ever go back to Colorado? Uh, I have, but not. Not as like a going back to my birthplace. Sure. It's like, oh, I've There's never been here before. That's I want to go to. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I mean, California is a superior state to a lot of them. You've got literally everything. Yeah, everything. And we think two hours of each other. That's for, for insane. most cases. Insane. Florida's super long. Like, I'm, I'm at like super south Florida. So it takes Oops. me six and a half hours to get out of Florida. And Ooh. it's all the same thing. Like, it's all flat. So it's not even fun to look at as you're leaving. Where's California? It's like, do you want to go snowboarding in the morning and then watch the sunset on the beach at night? You have that option. <laughs> it's true. It's insane. Absolutely. It's like, and there's deserts I mean, there? What? Dude. Yeah, right here, you could go from snowboarding to the desert to the beach in a day. That's insane. Have you done that? No, I don't snowboard, but. Oh, fair. Fair. Good. Yeah. I could if I yeah. wanted to. Yeah. It's just nice oh. to have the option. Yeah. I'm awful at snowboarding. That's not what I meant. I could go to the mountains. Is That's what true. I meant. There you go. That counts. I've never tried snowboarding. I feel like it's way more dangerous than I think it is. I bet it's not. I did one day. I did one day oh. with my dad. And it was, it was one of those father-daughter bonding things because I grew up skiing. So my whole family skied together. And this oh, one day, he and I were like, we're going to do snowboarding because we're going to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> my dad fell oh no you do he fell backwards and but the way he fell the way he hit his hand um ended up snapping the tendon behind his thumb oh oh no they had to call in the paramedics he had to be like you know flown out and it was a whole ordeal he lost like he still doesn't have strength in that hand like he can't oh, hold it no. because he had to re like rehab how to use his thumb again sure. um oh, so after that i was like you know what i'm good not snowboarding <laughs> you're like we're a skiing family i understand why now 
Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, you have an extra thumb, so that's cool. You know, if you, if you lose one, you have the other side, so that's good. Man, that's what I mean. See, it just and your thumb too, of all the things. Like that's right. that's kind of the most important finger <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Not an ape, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Man, that's the only thing. How do you even? How do you stop snowboarding? It's got to be like an angle thing, right? I know nothing about snowboarding. Uh, I mean, I stopped by sitting down. That oh, smart. Was, smart. But I only did one day. I'm sure there are better ways to yeah. stop. <laughs> On but day two, that's at, when you like, find out. <laughs> as perpendicular to the slope as possible and then sit. Smart. Smart. There are yeah. a few ways to go wrong in that in that trajectory. Right. Man, right. snowboarding. Can you surf? Have you tried, have you tried surfing? I have tried surfing. Uh, I, I'm not good at it. Is your thumb okay? My thumb's great. Oh, good, my thumb's good, great. good, good. And this, that's actually another thing that my dad and I did together when I was younger. Oh, right and on. He would take me out and, and we'd rent the foam boards. Oh, cool. Big foam boards because we would go to Hawaii or whatever. And he would stand behind me and he would act like I was catching the wave. There you but he go. Really push the board. <laughs> so Dude, that I would... It's like the coolest dad ever. He was, he was pretty cool. He was pretty cool. Dude. You know, he taught me like how to stand up in one go so that I didn't knock the board over. And Smart. yeah, but that's, I'm, I'm not good. I... <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. Well, at any sort of speed, water becomes concrete. So this is, yeah. there's a lot of danger in things. You know what I've just realized? All the cool stuff you can do comes at a cost. It's kind of dangerous as well. Yeah. Interesting. There's always a risk. Yeah. But that's what makes it fun. I mean, that's why, that's why they say, you know, there are people who are adrenaline junkies. Yes, good point. Because they chase that high. There's there's a thrill in the, oh my God, I almost died. Yeah. <laughs> For some people. You're right, you're right. I've got nine fingers still. <laughs> yeah. But, I never had that. Are you an adrenaline junkie? No, no, no not really. Same. I, I like to have that, a little bit of that rush. Yeah, same. But not to, not to some extent. Yeah. My little brother's the adrenaline one. He's like, I'm going to get a motorcycle. I was like, me too. He goes, I'm going to do wheelies. I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, the, there's the people that think two steps ahead, I think. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, there's a, there's a large margin of error here, and I am not willing to go there. And he's like, what do you mean? That's where we live. And I was like, okay, cool. Hey. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, it's interesting because with a lot of those activities, you, there's only so much progression you can do before you have to take the leap of faith. Oh, you're right. Because, like with um, tricking, for example. Right. You can't slow down a flip. That's At some true. Point, you just have to throw it and trust. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting balance of, I have done all of the progressions that I could possibly do, and now I just have to trust that it's there. Oh man. Did it, so? Did you grow up doing that as well? No, I did dance. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I did, I did a lot of dance and I did theater. Right on. That came in handy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out. You know what's funny too is, is I kept getting cast as all of like these creatures in theater. Oh, sweet. You know, like animals or sea nymphs. We did, we did the show called The Terrifying Travels of Theseus, Greek Hero. Oh, it was sweet. A, a devised piece we did in high school. Dude, it's a cool high school. It, you know, we had actually, a, we had an excellent theater program. Right on. We were very well known. I grew up in Northern California. Cool. And our program was well known in the area. And like, we would have people come in and watch the show who weren't related to people in the cast. Oh, nice. Which I think is actually a pretty big point for high school theater. I'd say so. Usually so, it's very, the group supports the group within the group. It's all, it's all your parents and their friends who yeah. come to see. Yeah, who else you could guilt trip into the theater? <laughs> we had a few drinks beforehand, and they're like, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> Yay, it's doing it. <laughs> she remembered all her lines, congratulations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that a dramatic pause, or is she trying to remember? <laughs> That's awesome, though. So was yeah. theater something that you were always into? Uh, Yeah. So I didn't know that I was. I did I did my first show. My mom put us in children's theater. Cool. Uh, there were four of us kids, and I think she was just like, how do I get all of you out of the house? <laughs> That's a way to do it. <laughs> she put us in everything. I mean, we did all kinds of day camps, and, and 
I was exposed to a lot of different activities, which is pretty cool. There you go. And so we did, she did, she put all four of us in the local children's theater. We were doing Annie. Nice. And we were, the three girls were all orphans. And my brother was, I think he was a chimney sweep. Oh, perfect. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he hated it. Fair. Because he never came back and did any other shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with this. <laughs> um, well, he was he was super into computers from a young age. Like he was already like tearing apart all of our electronics and trying to put them back together. Like that was his thing. Oh, that's awesome. Performance was not his thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the three of us girls went on and we did a few more shows until the price got to be ridiculous. Because you know every year oh, they yes. raise the price on those things, and then they would also make the parents sew all the costumes. Good lord. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're and paying for just, time. <laughs> in, in all reality, it was really expensive babysitting yeah <laughs> you're, right. you're right also you're gonna have to clothe your children for the production if you don't mind we're just gonna keep them in the same room <laughs> but we're really strict about what it has to look like and yeah. also, we don't care if you don't sew figure it out yeah. <laughs> there's fabric glue out there somewhere <laughs> so i will tell you we did mary poppins and i was a penguin for halloween oh, for sweet. next six years because my mom was i fucking still <laughs> like can i say that this. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I sewed this costume. You were wearing it. <laughs> that's amazing. Got to get the miles out of it. <laughs> oh, that's genius. I'll be honest. I would have done the same thing. It's still, it's still a penguin. I would too. I would too. <laughs> oh, that was actually um, that was pretty cool because when I and I'm going to take a tangent here. Yeah, that's the show. <laughs> because <laughs> that's all I do <laughs> same same um when I was in college I went I went to Chapman in Orange County and mm -hmm. that's right by Disneyland so it was an obvious college job for me sure to work there. and and it's a fantastic it was a fantastic college job like they I really have no regrets about working there I was lovely and I, I played a bunch of different characters sweet and one of the characters that I played, and my mom will never let me live this town, oh, was a penguin from Mary Poppins. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> found your calling. You see, it has come back around. <laughs> you peaked. You already made it. <laughs> you made it when you were six. That's right. You did the trial run. You just didn't know. <laughs> you, I mean, you were uniquely qualified, if we're being honest. I mean, I had a lot of experience. I'm just saying... <laughs> on and off stage as a penguin. <laughs> right. See, this is our parents. They just know things that we don't. She was right. on she was onto something. It was foresight. Yep. You're like, why am I a penguin again? She goes, Trust me. <laughs> when you're in college, this is gonna come in handy. You're like, All right, whatever it is. <laughs> It'll pay off at like just above minimum wage. It's yeah. great. <laughs> at the time you thought it was uh, preparing you to be a waiter. You're like, wait, hold on, no no no. I mean, but work. also both, because have you seen Mary Poppins? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there are threads here. We're picking up, Andy. <laughs> That's amazing. I like I like <laughs> oh, yeah. man. So, being in California, uh, being a penguin, that's pretty neat. <laughs> <You've> got, <laughs> I mean, I'm not a penguin in California. That's true. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Hey, we've already we checked that off the bucket list. Um, <laughs> method acting for penguins. I love it. <laughs> so when did you, like... Uh, go into acting to be like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna try this for like a viable thing so i went from right so after the after the children's theater my mom was like this is too expensive i'm not doing this with you anymore there she i started i it had opened up my eyes to storytelling in that medium cool so and i was kind of a loner kid like I was the middle child and my sisters and I didn't always get along so I spent a lot of time by myself sure and, um I would put together these stories by myself and then Sweet. teach them to my friends at recess and would talk the teacher into letting us present them right after lunch dude so I was like kind of putting on these little plays in fourth, like fourth and fifth grade that I never made an association of, oh, I'm putting together a play. It was just a, hey, I did this thing and I feel like we should present it. Yeah. So 
put all this work in. I was always the villain. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, I just remember this one where I was like the evil queen. You know, they're always based on stories that I knew, like Disney stories or whatever. Of course. And I was the evil queen and I made my, my best friend at the time, who was a little bit shorter than me, I made her be Igor. Uh. <laughs> I was Love like, it. you have to be hunched over. That's <laughs> what Igor is. Get lower. Get lower. The thing that I say you do, you have to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got in character is what you're telling me. Yes, I, I really did. <laughs> And then I, I, in middle school, uh, my older sister auditioned for the local junior college for their show. And I was like, oh, there's an opportunity for me to do this again. Sure. And so I started auditioning for their shows. And then I went to high school and I did all of the shows in high school. And I remember this one point, this probably broke my mom's heart. You know, I, I may be a junior in high school and we're talking about college and, and preparing for all of this. And she says, okay, so what do you what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, like, what do you want to make your career? Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to be an actor. And she goes, <laughs> no, no, really, what are you? <laughs> no. And I'm looking at her going, this is all that I have done. Yeah. <laughs> you did this to me. <laughs> I have literally not done anything else up to this point. <laughs> And you're surprised? <laughs> what has all this training been for, Mom? I'm a penguin. <laughs> I mean, at least I didn't say, hey, I want to be a penguin. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't imagine if I had told her at the time, I want to be a monster for film. Yeah, you just show up in makeup and everything and be like, this, Mom, this is what I want. <laughs> yes. But my mom is is truly amazing. And though she had some trepidation about that and – and to this day is still like, do you have a black backup plan? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they always do. She, she has been my number one supporter. That's uh, amazing. She she drove down from Northern California for not just every show that I was in, but every single show that I ran lights for or oh, that's cool. like, run tech for or, you know, because in college you have to do all the different things. Right. She came down for everything. She got like, an annual pass to Disneyland when I got that job. And she would just, when she was down, she would take her morning walk around the park. When I was That's in cool. she'd come up and she would like yell at the teenagers who harassed me. <laughs> <laughs> she, she has been a, a tremendous support. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've been very, very lucky with my, my parents and their, um, encouragement of this career sure i mean they started it so it's kind of their right. fault, their fault. <laughs> <laughs> the penguin life didn't choose us uh, to be fair my mom did also put me in computer camp and <laughs> fair that was for your brother though you didn't want him to be alone no i actually did 10 years as a software developer what after college hold on yeah what uh i i was one of those I got a little burnt out on acting I, when I first like after I moved to LA and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing because you taught me all of the artistic side of this and none of the business side. Yep. So I felt like I was scrambling to pay bills and hated waiting tables despite Fair. prior experience. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I was dating someone at the time who was a graphic designer and he was like, well, why don't we team up? You learn HTML, and I'll design the websites, and you build them. There you go. And I thought, well, that seems reasonable. And at this point, this was the beginning of WordPress. Oh. Like, so stuff wasn't that complicated yet. Sure. And it wasn't – there weren't all of these – Squarespace wasn't a thing. Sure. Wix wasn't a thing. You know, you couldn't really build your own website unless you knew some coding. Sure. So I took uh, a lynda.com course. Nice. Like a month to teach myself the basics. Whew. You know, train myself because I'd learned some of it when I, like at computer camp. And, right. Because HTML had been around for a while. Mm -hmm. So it was totally new. Um, and then he and I sort of started this partnership. And we split and I started my own thing because I was getting and then I started getting bigger jobs for, with companies like, like as a contractor with companies like Wells Fargo and Microsoft and Dude. 
I moved to Seattle and I wow. worked. Uh, yeah. And so I did that for a good, I was in Seattle for like a good six years. And then I came pretty much back to LA and worked, you know, with GoFundMe. Sure. Um, so I had some substantial, uh, I put myself in a good position financially to go back to acting is what I did. Smart. Smart. That's what you got to do. Yeah. An expensive thing to pursue. Yes. Man, what is Seattle like? I've never been, and all I just know the stereotypes is like, it rains. I'm like, okay, cool. You know what? That is a stereotype. Um, It doesn't rain that often. Oh. I know it what I learned today. It's very gray. Okay. Nine months. Ooh. Yes. Okay. It's Ray for three quarters of the year, and the sky sort of spits at you. <laughs> it's just but the it, spritz. It is. It is. And sometimes it's like big, like random drops, but oh. it isn't down for. So nobody, nobody who lives in Seattle carries an umbrella. Okay, that's fair. The only people who have umbrellas are the tourists. Yeah, okay. Now I know. Don't bring an umbrella. <laughs> well, I mean, we're two. And I just want to stand out as a tourist. Yeah, I don't want to do that, Andy. Come on, I need to be a local. <laughs> I want to know where the cool coffee places are. Lots of coffee. Yeah. Man. Uh, it's got to get cold there, right? It's on the coast, though. It's near water. It, it gets cold, but it's a pretty temperate cold. Okay. Only a, a couple times while I was there did it snow. Cool. And they call it the snow apocalypse because Seattle's not built for snow. Sure. It's like rain yeah. in LA. Everyone's like, What is happening? It's worse. <laughs> like, you think that LA shuts down when it rains. People just go on social media and they complain about the rain. Right. And they're like, Oh, no, it's <laughs> in Seattle, everything shuts down when it snows. Really? Be- because of the hills, once oh. the ice over you have, like, fire trucks slipping, like, sliding down hills that go 10 blocks. Oh, oh So no. it's actually really dangerous. Dear God. And up until a couple of years ago, they weren't allowed to salt the streets. Really? Why? Because of the salmon. Oh. And it would change the, I think it, it changes, like, the pH balance of the, the saline nature of the, of the sound. Sure. So, and salmon is a huge part of the industry there. Huh. So you couldn't. But then they realized, like, oh, no, this is actually a big problem. People are dying. Yeah, fair. Salt the streets. Man. Can you imagine seeing that, walking outside, and then just, like, an ambulance on the way to get somebody else is just no, skidding? I have, imagine it. I have literally seen it. What? You have? <laughs> you could YouTube it. If you just YouTube Seattle Snowpocalypse. Oh, my God. We'll see some pretty crazy videos. Oh my god, that's insane! Don't get yeah. hurt during the snowpocalypse because you're on your own. Man. Right. Wow. But it's also so interesting to walk around, especially at night. When I remember walking through uh, South Lake Union the first year that it snowed, and it's so bleak. Everything is covered in snow. The the street lights are super orange, and nobody was out. And there was like a car wrapped around that street light or, you know, like there was a car crashed into that building and like they hadn't been moved because nobody could move them. (laughs) They're just there. So it is literally like walking through like a post-apocalyptic world. What? Because you're the only person out there and it's just like cars crashed everywhere. Good Lord. I mean, minus the devastation. That's kind of cool, but like not cool, but like kind of cool. (laughs) We were like, Oh, I'm enjoying this, but not enjoying this. Cause yeah. Awful. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you that those, those three months when it's not gray, it is the most beautiful place in the world. Yeah. It is perfect weather. The sky is super blue. Like, there's no smog. This, like, the, the water is crystal. It is... It is stunning. Everything is green because it's gotten so much moisture. Sure. But it's just beautiful. Man. That's the thing about those northern states is you kind of have to earn it. You know, <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like the winters are, like, really, really difficult. Like, New Hampshire is where my dad's side of the family is from. Mm-hmm. And gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, but, you know, subhuman temperatures in the winter. So it's like, dear God, if you can make it to the summer – you get you get the amazing views, but man, those winters 
They're brutal. Oh, oh, snow's cold. Yeah, I don't think, uh, to be honest, I don't think I have it in me to yeah. do a winter in the East Coast. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I thought about it. Like, ah, I should live in New York. No. Yeah. No, I'm not living in New York. <laughs> yeah. It's cold. It's real cold. I'm a, I'm a California girl. I'm so soft. <laughs> uh, yeah. I So I was born in North Carolina, but I was raised in Florida. And now when it gets to the 50s, I'm like, oh, man, it's cold. All right. And then I get kind of ashamed of myself because I'm like, oh, no. If I went back to North Carolina, everyone's in, like, shorts and tank tops in the 50s. Like, this ain't that cold. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, I'm doing a disservice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My blood is thinned. And North Carolina doesn't even get that cold. New Hampshire gets cold. New York is very cold. Goodness. Talk about snow. Right? Ugh. 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 I don't like snow. It's pretty in pictures. Right. Yeah, but then, you know, it, it's cold and it's wet, and wet socks are the worst. Man. I agree. Yeah. Oh, uh, wet jeans are pretty bad. Ooh, yeah. Wet jeans are real bad, especially going they... in and out of places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a fan. Wet socks will ruin your day. Wet jeans will ruin your week. You're like, what is <laughs> what is going on? That is I... <laughs> true statement. <laughs> yeah, you're like, why am I even here? Oh, man. That's crazy. So six years in Seattle, and then you went back to L.A. because you're like, all right. Let's do this. Yeah. Man. So how did you how did you reacclimate? Because it's different worlds, really. It it is. And I actually came back to LA with I got a job in tech. Cool. Makes sense. And then but the condition it was a startup, and so I'm asked one of the conditions was I have the time to go for auditions there you and go. the flexibility to take jobs as I book them. Because I knew I'm not going, the likelihood of me booking a series regular role Mm -hmm. at the start is pretty small. It's going to be a co-star, maybe a guest star Mm -hmm. on something. So it'll only be a couple days of shooting max. Sure. Probably. And that was pretty much the case. You know, I was booking some small stuff and um, it was fine. And I... I just came back with this, now I'd been running uh, my own contracting company as a web developer, or as a, as a front-end engineer, really. Sure. So I had a better business sense. Smart. Where I could say, oh, I need to market myself this way, or I need to pursue these avenues of networking and start to build up these relationships all the stuff that I didn't know before. Sure. I now had this business sense. And there are things that I'm now still learning as social media is changing the game quite a bit. For real. But I was still focused on just, on not on just, but on being an on-camera actor. Right. And even though in Seattle I had met, I met Doug Jones. Oh. And that was... Legend. He, he, was, <laughs> he was a friend of the guy I was dating at the time. and. You know? Yeah, so I actually got to, he and I took Doug out for his birthday, and Doug gave me a lot of really great advice. Uh, at the time, I wasn't really considering being a creature actor. I was interested in it and was like, oh, I've kind of got a history in theater doing it. Sure. But hadn't really considered it for film. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got, I started feeling a little stuck with the on-camera work. Like, I couldn't quite get my brand together. Sure. So I was taking classes in just things that I was interested in. And I came across um, TJ Storm. Dude. And I took his uh, his class on creature performance. That and guy. everything clicked for me at that point. I bet. And it was like, this, this is it. This is the piece of my brand that I've been missing. This is the, the thing that I have been working toward. Yeah, you found it. I didn't know anything about mocap. I knew nothing when I took that class. Really? Yeah, zero. Like, I knew Andy Circus. Of course. That is the extent that I knew about motion capture. And Ooh, Talk about the deep end. Right? And it has been, so I started, I continued to train with TJ, and he has been an amazing mentor. Um and I've kind of added in my own my own side of it because I, in addition to also being a software developer, I'm a personal trainer. Right on. For careers. 
And so I've kind of taken this, the movement side of it from that angle as well. And with that and my business sense, when he wanted to open the school, it was a natural fit. Sure. Him to go, hey, do you want to do this with me? And I was like, of course. Like, that, yes, absolutely do I want to do this with you. Um, Dude. Because you should be exposed to this. Yeah. Yeah. On the ground floor. That's so cool. Yeah. It's almost like you're a multifaceted person. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> You've got layers? What is this? <laughs> I'm a real human. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't, let's not go that far. I mean. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me not screw with my branding too much. Yeah, exactly. I'm, try I'm trying to help you, Andy. Right? Let's, <laughs> let's tone this in. Creature stuff, creature stuff. <laughs> so then when did you decide to get into stunts then? Because you've got acting, you've got performance, you've got all these things, but stunts is a totally different side yes, to this. It is. And and that's that's an interesting one that, this pun is not intentional. My last but... name is Balance, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so, my, I, I, I sort of fell into stunts. Uh, um, <laughs> I like it. I'm a pun so, connoisseur, and that was, that was a good one. Good job. Good, good. good. <laughs> so while I was in Seattle, I had this brief period where I moved to New Orleans. What? Yeah. That's not was... close to that. No, it's not. I moved all the way across the country. I sold everything and like loaded up my my little Mazda three and drove did like a month long road trip. Um all right. spent months in New Orleans before I was like, This is not where I should be living. <laughs> <laughs> um my twenties were, were fun. And yeah, I'll just, why not? Uh, they they were an adventure. I, I tried a lot of things and Good. In New Orleans and I went there for acting because this, this is the point where a lot of stuff had moved out of L.A. Right. And they were, they were calling it Hollywood South. Like they had just started calling it Hollywood South and the tax incentives were great. They were shooting a ton of stuff out there. And I was like, I don't, I'm not ready to go back to L.A. Let me try New Orleans. Yeah. And so I moved there and I was living in the, in the Garden District area. Nice. And I knew this woman – I, who I had known, she was a friend of mine from L.A. before. Mm -hmm. And she was the production coordinator on American Horror Story. Uh -huh. They were shooting Coven at this time. Sweet. So she and I were just, we just got together. We're having a drink. Um, you know, I think we got dinner or something like that. And she got called back to set. And she was like, oh, do you want to go with me? And me thinking, like, really, is that okay? Because I feel like in L.A., that's you can't just invite somebody to set. Right. Because everything's kind of a little bit more casual there, or it was at least at that time. And she was like, yeah, yeah, that's fine if you really want to go. And I was like, yeah, absolutely I want to go. For sure. So she's like, I'll be working the whole time. And I was like, that's so cool. I'll just hang. Um, so I was on set because the mansion they were shooting in was also around the corner from my apartment. Perfect. So I'm on set and... I'm like hanging out with Patty Lapone and you Dude. know like cast and as you do. Right, like as you do. <laughs> we're we're shooting outside and I'm talking to the guy next to me and it turns out he's the stunt coordinator and I was just asking him questions and he's like, Ah, oh, how do you get into this? And and not even like literally not hustling, just yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, I, didn't, curious. I didn't know hustling was a thing. I knew nothing about stunts. Sure. Um, but I'd always been athletic. Like I'd done dance and I was doing aerial acrobatics. And um, so I had, I had a lot of body awareness sure. and, and whatnot. And he kind of looked at me and he was like, oh, is that something you're interested in? He's like, are you union? And I was like, yeah, because I was union for being an actor. Sure. And he goes, okay, well, I may have something for you. I've been flying girls in from LA, but let me... I might have something that I can, you know, put someone who's a little greener in. Hey. So my first job was actually doubling Emma Roberts on American Horror Story. Dude. And it was super generous of him. He was an amazing, amazing guy to take me in like that, being as green as I was. Sure. Um, and held my hand through the process. And um, fortunately, like, I do have enough 
body awareness that it wasn't that much of a risk or anything. And the stuff that we had that I had to do wasn't super complicated. Sure. It gave me this feeling of like, oh, here's another thing that I had just never thought about. Yeah. And so when I moved back to L.A., I was like, I want to do more of that. And so then I kind of started training some martial arts and training more uh, falls and wrecks and things like that. And that's in terms of stunts. Primarily what I do is falls and wrecks. Sure. You know, and a little bit of fighting. That's so cool. But for most actors my size, well, although this is changing because the stories in Hollywood are changing now. Yeah, true. That it's less, up until the last few years, most, I felt like most actresses my size were the victims. Right. In fights, and now they're getting a little more power. Yeah. So we can use more fighting techniques. I love it. But yeah, so that's how I got into into stunts. That's so cool. I love hearing stories like that where like it's surprising how that happens when there's somebody when they learn on the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a lot of the creature performers in the new Star Wars movies, a lot of them like learned a lot of their puppetry and stuff on set. They like knew someone, they'd done it before and then really honed the craft while there and I'm like, "You you learned on Star Wars? You didn't mm-hmm. what? It's so it cool. I mean, a lot of this industry is, um, I mean, I almost hate to say this, but it is right place, right time, right conversation. Absolutely. Luck is preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And and having enough preparation, like that's... Totally that's, agreed. Because I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like this stunt coordinator was just like, oh, you know, over Random there. citizen. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just throw you in. Like I had a background that was that worked with what he needed. Absolutely, that's but... the, that's the key. There's a lot, lot of <laughs> preparation and opportunity. It is fifty fifty. Yes, it needs to be a whole lot because you have to be able you have to be able to do the job, mm-hmm. and then you can learn the intricacies of it afterwards. Right. But that's so cool, and you learned on American Horror Story. I mean, what? And by Coven, it's already a phenomenon. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty fantastic. It was, Dude. It was a really cool experience. I bet. Have you ever injured yourself doing stunts? Nothing major. Nice. I, I mean, always you ask stunt people that. And stuff. Um, sure. But no. There you go. There you I've never broken a bone. I've never... Think about this. Yeah, hold I, on. <laughs> this, this wasn't actually doing stunts. This was doing uh, a creature. Oh. Did pop a rib head out, cool. which was I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> so that was fun. Going to the chiropractor and he's like, "Oh yeah, your ribs out." And I was like, "What? How? Thing? That's oh. why my back hurts." Yeah, oh, but that's also why I started um, at Minds I Tried the School that, that TJ and I run. Yeah, that's why I started the Creature Fit program. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of weird positions that you're in that you haven't trained for. Sure. Especially doing quadrupedal creatures. Right. Low to the ground ones. And you're not doing, I mean, you're not in that position for 30 seconds. Yeah, for real. You're in that position off and on for eight hours. Oh. So. Endurance. Yeah. And you have to, you have to train the endurance. You have to protect your joints. You have to build up all your stabilizer muscles and, um, we were, you know, we were finding our students Man. needed that aspect of it Sure. as well. I mean, and I needed that aspect of that because I was feeling like, oh man, I've got this for an hour, but <laughs> 12 hour days. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I haven't had the experience of any 12 hour days in mocap. That's good. On set's different, but. Yep. Mocap is is generally an eight hour day. That's cool. A little yeah. more manageable, but at yeah, the same it, time, you're wearing the headgear and you're doing all this stuff, and your creature works awesome. Your reel is nuts. Thank you. You're so flexible. I was like, mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I can't even touch my toes, so I'm like, what is happening? You're like a spider <laughs> person. This is amazing. Makes sense. Did you ever have you ever pulled a really good prank? Because I feel like if I was able to contort myself that way. I'd hide in closets and cars and just be like, oh, hey. I did this. I will have to see if I still have this video. Yes. And it's here, but 
Um, we were shooting. We were shooting this action sequence. Me and the stunt team, and we were in this uh, like abandoned animal hospital. Oh, classic! And there were two girls on the set, two teenage girls, um, <laughs> who were like just joking around, and we were like on their phones and doing like I think we were doing an Instagram story. Sweet. And as they're walking through this animal hospital, and it was just such a perfect horror setup that. <laughs> I ran around the other side into one of the hallways that I knew they were going to, like, pass. And I went upside down into that position. (laughs) And as soon as they passed through, I bolted in that upside down, like, (laughs) position straight at them. And you just see it. All you get, it's it's such, like, a Blair Witch moment. But (laughs) all you see on the video is, like, them talking and, like, looking at what's going on in in the animal hospital. And then all of a sudden, this quick pan, I think you see a flash of me, and then she screams, and the phone drops, and, like, she's just running. It was so I felt so, I mean, I felt a little bad afterwards, but not that bad. That was so worth it. Oh, my God, that's perfect. I love doing that live on Instagram. Sure. It's even better. <laughs> So I'll have to see if she sent it to me. I think she did, but it's been a while. Oh, my God. That's amazing. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. If I could do that, I'd be doing that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So when, you're, so when you're doing performance capture, right, you got the suit on, you got the little ball light things everywhere. Was there a learning curve learning that particular type of performance? There's – there are differences – Mm-hmm. between doing film and doing motion capture, there are, there are technical differences and performance differences that have to, that take that, the tech into consideration. Sure. Um, all in all, it's acting. Yeah. And any, any medium that you are acting in is still acting. There are just, you have to sort of adjust the dials Sure, that makes sense. Things, um, because there are certain things that are more possible in motion capture than doing practical effects, right? Or vice versa. So being aware of those differences, so you can kind of cater to the media. Sure, that makes total sense. Learning curve, but all in all, it's still acting, and and your performance is still what's coming through. Sure. There's no ca- if you're giving a bad performance, then they're motion capturing a bad performance. <laughs> yeah. the, you know, they have a, a saying in motion capture, skeleton never lies. Ooh, that's good. Because that's what they're getting is, is they're getting the data. And it's fascinating to me how much you can see through that data. Right. Especially but now. Even if I'm not on, uh, even if I'm not having, a, if I don't have a facial cam on. Mm-hmm. If I call in a performance for whatever reason, sure, you can tell. Really? Because your movement's not motivated. Oh yeah. So, and and this is something that's interesting when I watch creature performers is that there's a lot of really fantastic movers, you know, like circus performers or gymnasts who have all kinds of abilities that I don't have. Mm-hmm. They aren't actors, and they've never approached. They may never have approached creature performance from an internal emotional place sure so all of the cool things that they can do don't have that underlying life sure they're that they're a cool thing you can do as opposed to yeah 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 so it's marrying the two it's taking these people who have these incredible movement abilities and saying let's build up this internal life sure that is maybe the biggest learning curve i see That makes sense. Having done the acting before, because you've done stunts, you've done on camera, you've done performance capture, Mm -hmm. which one is the most difficult to do? Because they're all, it's all acting, it's all not easy. Yeah, that's a really good question. Thank you. (laughs) It's the most difficult. Just popped into my head. (laughs) I think 
they're okay they're they're each the most difficult for a different reason that is the very diplomatic answer <laughs> and here's what i will say i think that on camera acting mm-hmm. is the most exposing and vulnerable yeah i can see that and and i said that because the other types of acting are also vulnerable but you are not as exposed sure you don't have a giant lens in your pores and it's not, yeah, it's not your face attached to that vulnerability. Right. So there's no uh, accountability for that vulnerability, if that makes sense. Sure. Makes total sense. I think physically and technique-wise, stunts is the most difficult. Yeah. Especially because you can train all day, every day, and stunt performers do. They train hard. and. This is why I tend to use the, the term action actor for myself as opposed to stunt performer. I like it's it. People who, who do stunts full time train far harder than I do. They're like all day, like 87, 11. They're yeah. all day, every day. Exactly. They're athletes. <laughs> yeah. They are athletes and, and it is grueling on your body. Yeah. But it has to be that precise because when you get on set, you don't know what kinds of conditions are going to be and how you're going to have to adjust. For real. So you need to have that level of physical control. Um, and for motion capture, those are the three you asked me, right? Motion capture. Maybe. Stunts and... Yep. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think motion capture is the most difficult in telling the story through movement. Because they're catching every little tiny elbow move that you have, so you have to be deliberate. You have to be deliberate, but in some, there are times when you have to project for movement. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because a little a little move isn't going to read. Sure. But it still has to be grounded. It's like theater. It is. It is like theater. It's a lot like theater. I think motion capture is the most like theater. That makes sense. And you're on a stage, and a lot of it's, yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. But you also have to switch between doing in-game stuff, especially if you're doing video games, if you're doing in-game stuff versus cinematic. Yeah. Stuff. I didn't even know those were two different things until I talked to TJ. He's like, right. you've got navigation, and then you've got cinematics, where it's like performance, movement. It's this marriage of the two. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing in-game stuff, I mean, frequently they'll use stunt performers for it because it's so athletic. Sure. But if they're stunt performers and not stunt actors or action actors, they don't necessarily bring that character with them. Right. It's the movement, but that character has to match the in- the cinematic character. Uh. Motion capture, I think, maybe one of the biggest challenges, and I'm just thinking of this as we're talking. Yeah. Maybe challenges is recognizing that most of the time... You are not the only person creating that character. Ooh, that's good. So there is there is kind of an ego check. I bet. And and there is a how do I work with the voiceover actor if it's somebody different? How do I work with the stunt performer if that's somebody different? Right, because if it's so, off. And they're not usually on the set with me. I am just hearing their performance or seeing their performance. And being asked to match it. Is that usually the pipeline? Like they have the dialogue recorded first already and then you guys do the movement it's, afterwards? It, it, I have seen it both ways. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I have seen it both ways on the same project because they record the dialogue. Oh. They have us do the movement. They realize the dialogue doesn't work. So they have us do the movement with scratch dialogue and then redo the vi- dialogue later. Oh, man. Yeah. Process. It is. It is. It is a process. Man, that's really cool, though. But it it is, and it's super collaborative. And and I think that is also something I love about motion capture. Is I have yet to work on a project where there are egos that get in the way. Sure. It's a team effort, and you're all in it together. Sure. It's like one can't take a majority of the credit and have an ego because everyone is a small cog in the machine. Probably you're not any, like none of you are going to get credit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's the the plight. If anyone's getting credit, it's probably the voiceover actors. Yeah, 
Yeah. See, that's why I have this show, Andy. That's the service I provide. Because I'm like, here's the other thing. This. <laughs> like, it was such a big deal that TJ got a credit for Godzilla. It was. It like, was this is what I'm talking about. You know what? He's still not credited on IMDb. <sighs> I'll call some people. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't say on the record there'll be threats, but, you know, just give it time. Uh, <laughs> that's nuts, though. I love learning about these things. Uh, yeah. Man. It's changing. It's definitely changing. Yeah, for sure. And as tech changes as well, like, it's just... Can you imagine where we're going to be in like five years with this stuff? I can't. Man. I really have no idea because it is moving so fast. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we can do facial capture on our phones. I know. Isn't that weird? real time like that. Huh. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. It's cool. <laughs> it's so cool. I mean, I like watching Black Mirror too. But yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> I've like, seen Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when Siri first came out I was like this is a Skynet prototype I don't care what anyone's saying they're calling it Siri but I see the truth and now they're like and it's even more now I'll like have a conversation uh, with someone and be like you know Tic Tacs are kind of neat and then three hours later on Instagram I'll see an ad for Tic Tacs I'm like <gasps> true it's so listening to you it's everywhere Mm-hmm. It's gonna be great until the uprising when our phones are gonna like give up our hiding spaces. You know what I mean? You'll have like a really nice nook where the Terminator's walking by, and your phone will be like, "He's over here." You're like, "Oh no!" <laughs> it's gonna be the worst hide and seek game ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, pro tip: when that happens, smash your phones, guys. It's gonna be difficult, yep. but we can do it. <laughs> we'll go back to uh, old school showing up on time. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, come on, don't be unreal. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, isn't that funny though? That Yeah. What do you <laughs> Once you're we... able to tell time, then you're not <laughs> adherent to it anymore. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Other people's times when you couldn't just tell them last minute you weren't coming. Yep. That'd be too inconvenient. Come on. <laughs> this is twenty nineteen here. I don't know if you ever did this, but collect calling your folks to tell them to come pick you up. Oh, yeah. Your entire message in the name slot. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom, it's me. Come pick me up. Bye. <laughs> That's genius. I never thought of that. That's what we did. Oh, my God. I remember collect calls. Oh, man. What a time to be alive, right? <laughs> because pay phones. That's <laughs> pay phones. Yes, pay phones were cool. That's a sentence that's never been said out loud before. <laughs> <laughs> What a weird time to be born, like mm -hmm. right at the right at the cusp of the internet, where like you remember before the internet, but then very much after the internet, as opposed to the previous generation that are kind of learning it as like, what is this new world? It's very right. strange. Yeah, because cell phones came into being a being popular right when I was in, like right when I started college. Yeah, That's so which weird. I feel like I was in a good space age-wise yeah. to adapt to that as opposed to people who are maybe already in their mid-20s, late 20s. That I would agree. be more difficult. I agree. But And now babies are using iPads. You're like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Cats are using iPads. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to catch fish. You're right. <gasps> oh, my God. We're doomed. My dog doesn't recognize screens, and I'm like, thank you. Yeah. Whew. We, st that, right? we still got that one. <laughs> They're not the <laughs> overlords yet. <laughs> My God, that's nuts. So then, what advice would you have for somebody who like wants to get into the kind of things that you're into? All 700 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, all right, this sounds like silly advice, but invest time in the things you really want to do that get you moving and that's figure smart. out the way you like to move because from there you can kind of maybe you realize like oh I really like working in kind of weird asymmetrical ways and discovering different creatures through my body I mean I did a lot of um, experimental theater in college too which I think is why creatures was so natural for me Sweet. but you might discover that or you might discover oh I really like being athletic and martial and like in the martial arts and or Ha this having beautiful lines and gymnast abilities and then maybe stunts is for you or but move 
That's it. Right. <laughs> try it out. <laughs> yes, try it out. And then and and don't be afraid to suck. That's a big one. Yeah. That's a huge one. That's a tough one to get over sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we all have our egos. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that is that is the best one. And honestly, train everywhere you can. Because you'll figure out what you like and what you don't like. Yeah, that's true. And otherwise, I think people get caught in this cult mentality of, oh, I only trained this one place. And I say this being <laughs> school. I'm telling you to train wherever you can. <laughs> yeah. But my, it's my personal belief is, is do train wherever you can and then stay where you like. Sure. And put more tools in your toolbox because you never know which one you're going to need. That's true. That's true. And do something your heart's in. You know what I mean? You'll get so much farther if you're actually into it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, on that on that, uh, on that, that hand, Mind's Eye Tribe, first off, <laughs> awesome name. Thank you. Secondly, let's talk about it. What do, what do you guys do? You said classes? There's yeah. things? Talk to me. All right. So we are an Action Actors Academy, Love and it. we provide classes in... Everything the action actor needs from swords to tactical to magic, heroes, uh, action for film, which is basic stunt fighting. We've this is like the coolest got- thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's come on. It's everything you did as a kid, but yeah. how to do it for the job. What? Mm-hmm. Dude. Yeah, so we have... Lots of workshops and a bunch of different things. We just put up our schedule for the beginning of next year. So if you are in the LA area, check that out. It's at mindseyetribe.com. What is your life? Wonderful. Yeah. My life is wonderful. <laughs> Man, that's so cool. Wow. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, if you're into that kind of stuff, it's whatever. You know, it's cool. right. Dude. I'm not into that kind of stuff. Yeah, of course. It, so you train a lot. You've done all these things for creature performance. Is there a specific type of training that you found comes in handy more? Uh, for creature performance? Yes. Yes. Um, actually, I think what we teach at Mindset Tribe. There we go. It's almost it's like I planned this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't want to get too much into the details of what that class is. Of course. It we break down how to build creatures into a very clear set of steps to think about. Sure. So that you have something that that is instinctual and unique but grounded and has opinions about things and can exist in a full world. Sure. It's alive. It, yes. Yes, it's very alive. It is because I think a lot of people start with when they start with creatures, they start from the movement side. They look at a picture and go, oh, I can put my body in this position, and it looks like it moves like this. Right. But again, don't think about, oh, what's my opinion on this, or, or how do I sense the world? Sure. It's through my eyes, because we are, as humans, very visual. Um, but it might not be a visual creature. Sure. It's case by case. Or its eyes may not be in front of its head. Oh, nice. So you've got to think about all of those things, and, and we have a very solid structure for how to approach that. That's awesome. From experience, because you guys are killing mm-hmm. it. Thank you. Dude, it's so awesome. Also, congrats on Vader Immortal, buddy. Thank you. That's huge. That very cool. Mind's Eye Tribe out there doing the thing. Yeah, yeah, that was fun, because that was both me and TJ on yeah. that podcast. yeah. And I was like five times his size, which also, <laughs> oh. I'm just going to throw that out there. There you go. Take that, TJ. He shows up on set and I was like, guess how tall you are. Huh? Guess. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm up to my shin. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You look up to me now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, that's a fun place too. ILM, their motion capture room is nuts. Talk about tech. Good Lord. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're a fun crew. I had a blast on that project. That's awesome. You got to be a Star Wars creature. You did. I know. I am. Yeah. You did. Yeah. It. You did it. I did. I, I think I'm the first female Rancor. Ooh, I like it. I like it a lot. 
So don't quote me on that. Um, and technically, they're calling this creature a dark gas, but it's in the it's in the Rancor family. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So um, I think yeah, I think I'm the first female Rancor. Not bad at all. Dude. Nah. <laughs> you can say that forever now. <laughs> Talk about what is your life? <laughs> I know. What is my life, right? Dude, I love it. You're killing it. You're killing it. Can you believe we've been talking for over an hour already? Uh, no, that has flown by. <laughs> Boom! That's my litmus test. <laughs> I always ask people then because one day they're going to be like, yes, I've been watching the clock. And I'm like, oh, cool. All right, see ya. <laughs> but before I let you go, I have to ask where can people find you online? Uh, my handle for Instagram and Twitter, which are probably the most, I don't post a lot of Twitter, but you can find me there. Um, is Andy underscore Norris. Classic. Yep. Get that Pretty. SEO. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Tech well, words. <laughs> somebody already took Andy Norris, so I have to put the underscore in there. But Let's see what I can do. <laughs> there's so <laughs> m- there's another guy named Brian Balance from Elizabeth City, North Carolina, and I think I have to kill him. Like I think that's the <laughs> Highlander rules, or like the one, you know. Yeah, maybe one. Yeah, I mean, I don't make the rules; I just apply them to life. But this was awesome. <laughs> This is fantastic. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it is at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. Let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon. So if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows... You can now do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.